Hi, my name is David Reinstein, and this is the first event that the UnJournal is putting together and co-hosting, inaugurating the UnJournal Prize. The event is all about making research better, more impactful, particularly by improving the ways that we evaluate research. Thanks to everyone for coming. Thanks to the presenters. Thanks to the co-hosts, Center for Open Science, Effective Thesis. And thanks for the people on the UnJournal team helping me put this together, particularly David. Um, I'm looking forward to your feedback, looking forward to learning what you're up to and engaging in conversations. We want this event to be interactive and productive. So to kick things off, let me start by making the case that research should be evaluated publicly, independently of journals or of its publication and using quantifiable ratings. Then I'll give you an overview of what we're doing at the UnJournal, our thinking behind it, and our progress and our challenges, get some things I'd like your feedback on, choices, and how you might uh, be able to get involved. The whole presentation and notes are made, gonna be made available. The basic case for journal independent public structured evaluation. The old system was built on mail, postal mail, printing press, uh, even in my day, we spent a lot of time, we went to the library, you you went to the copy machines, and you had to bend the journal over the thing so that you could print out the article that you were never going to read. But this printing imposed a natural filter, access to the scarce resource of space in a printed journal. But I am saying we relied on this as a default filter for too long when it no longer needs to be the filter, and we can do things other than that. Have we lived up to the promise of our technologies? Information technology has made knowledge shareable. Working paper archives and other public bibliometric tools have in principle freed us from the journal monopolies over dissemination and curation. But the evaluation, credibility, and career capital are still locked in to these journals. We now have the technical ability, we can all publish anything to the whole world for free with beautiful formats, transparent, living. We can communicate instantly, give feedback. We can have nice um, mechanisms for aggregating this feedback, but we're still stuck in this old system. Tenure track criteria of the Department of Economics at Bonn, after some caveats, at least one article published in a top five general interest journal in economics, a number of published articles in top field journals. Um, we can move on from this and this will unleash a range of benefits. Or what I mean to say is that if we can make credible journal independent public evaluation a thing, this will unleash a range of benefits. So open access, that's something that Johnny Coates of ASAP Bio will talk about in his breakout workshop, is imposing costs, not just the costs paid to the profit for-profit journals, which are substantial and, and associated um, transaction costs, but also closed paywalled formats are less shareable and, and keeps us from inter acting and having conversations and limits their the usability of these in other tools. Um, another thing that this will unleash is if the getting accepted in the journal isn't the only outcome and the only output, we can move towards evaluation across the research life cycle before and after the point that would have been the, the publication, evaluation of, of, of um, uh, plans, pre-registrations, um, uh, and then we have we can support robustness replication. The UnJournal is is trying to support initiatives like the Institute for Replication. We can pass early evaluations to them for insights on things that need to be checked. And then we can think of the paper or the project or the research finding as a living thing that needs maintenance that you can uh, that you need to 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 keep working on, not just say, I got it published, it's over. Macy Daly will talk about that in her presentation on Center for Open Science's Lifecycle Assessment Program. There are some other benefits that I will talk about that I want to highlight, okay? Firstly, 
we can have journal formats other than what traditional, a bit conservative, slow journals allow and enable and shackle us to. Dynamic formats can allow multiverse analysis, can allow people to check the assumptions, can allow send people to look for themselves. How robust are these results to different possible specifications? Um, you know, this can be part of the thing that gets evaluated, and it will be if it's the thing that gets evaluated and there's rewards to that. Interactivity is, is much more possible when you can use any format you want and have that evaluated. It doesn't have to fit in the volumes of a journal. Um, and it can be part of the thing that's evaluated. Okay, so check out distill.pub for a great example of this. And then, of course, the advantages in terms of transparency for the replicability for people to be able to understand what they're looking at and to check the statistics and assumptions and replicate it and et cetera, et cetera. Um, we have these things called dynamic documents, Quarto, Jupyter Notebooks. These should be the things that are evaluated. These sh and people will get a lot more value out of them. Um, you can open the code that you want to see. How was it built? What, what exact assumptions did they use? And you could have expanded explanations if you want to know more about the theory or the model, et cetera. It doesn't have to just be 30 pages in a journal plus a ridiculous long PDF assessment uh, appendix. Another advantage which the UnJournal is working on is making assessment more precise. Currently, it's just what... The, the way people assess papers is basically, okay, maybe how many citations it got, but mainly in economics, what journal it ended up in and what tier is that journal. That's a very imprecise measure, and there's a lot of noise in that process. Some uh, Someone could get in because of, of ties or got lucky, or they had to submit quickly because they're coming up for tenure, and then the ranking's not clear, and maybe there are no strong journals in your specific field. Um, may, Bringing assessment or evaluation apart from journals enables much more precise assessment. So we can ask at the UnJournal, we ask our evaluators to rank the research relative to a reference group as a percentile uh, in an overall sense. And also we ask them to make predictions and judgments relative to a currency people are familiar with, which is journal tiers, as we explained. You can see the interfaces and our data dashboard at these links. The assessment also can be multidimensional. It's not just what journal did you get in, which can really kind of only have one dimensionality, or at least it's going to be very confusing. But uh, in what ways is this strong and how strong is it in those ways? And policymakers, for instance, might care about some of those much more than others. They might care about simply uh, you know, I want to decide which policy to adopt. I want to decide how much weather to fund this. I'll, I want to know how credible are the results? How much should I believe the results? How much should I update my beliefs based on the results? At the UnJournal, we ask people to rate, give sliders to rate research along six different sort of descript, six different categories, as well as expressing their uncertainty. And then we can map this out. We can compare two papers or projects on each of these categories. Um, here uh, in more detail. Um, I also want to mention that making the evaluations public offers a lot of advantages as well, making the scientific standards clearer and more transparent, fostering discussion, enhancing understanding and trust, rather than elites having expressing their taste or private networks who know what's hot right now. The evaluations the evaluation content, as well as the ratings, should be made public. The final benefit, which I think is perhaps the most important benefit, uh, or the biggest benefit, is making the system more efficient so that people are focusing on doing better research, improving their research, um, rather than playing the game of journal shopping. The current, and also making the system more straightforward. The current system is a binary outcome system. Get rejected, accepted, you reject it, you have to start over. It can take many years. And the conventional wisdom is depends a lot on your presentation and your submission strategy. And if you lobby and present to the right editors and referees. So if people spend more time gaming the system and less time actually making the research better. 
you can think of a much simpler system. It's kind of obvious. We're not the only ones advocating it. Share your research publicly. Get evaluation that's credible and that is prompt because the first time you get it evaluated, you get this outcome that can demonstrate the credibility of the research as well as help you in your career. Get that tenure, get that job, whatever, get that grant. But then you don't have to end there. It's not that you, once the thing was published, it's over. There's nothing else I can do unless I present, pre pretend it's a new paper. I can improve. I can respond. I can make the work more credible and go for more evaluations. Okay, so what is being done? I'm not going to talk about these other initiatives, but just to say we're not the first ones to try this, but we have a somewhat different approach, perhaps proactive in different ways, in a different area. We have more re some different resources. We're using incentives, quantification approach, non-exclusivity. Um, we're focusing on what we call globally impactful research, focusing on economics and quantitative social science. So let me give you a flavor of our approach. I've already gone to the ratings a little bit. So researchers submit the work or we reach out to find work that seems both prominent and has strong potential for impact. And we decide to evaluate that work or have that work evaluated potentially with the author's permission. That's that's a complicated. Um, so then once the work's sort of in our database, we have a system for prioritizing it for impact potential and relevance to us. Um, it's fairly transparent is a voting based system. Then we choose an evaluation manager and they commission experts uh, to evaluate the paper. And we pay these people to do these evaluations, both the ratings and descriptions. We have certain things we emphasize, but generally it's comparable to the, to the existing process, at least the sort of referee report part of it. On average, we give about $500 in compensation, including incentives. Um, and we're not exclusive. We do not publish research. We link the research, which should be hosted on the web in any format. We publish the evaluation package. So authors can submit to other journals or other evaluators if there's such a thing. This is good because it, we're, at least we're offering a bridge rather than asking people to jump off and give up on the current system. You can submit to your work to us and also to traditional journals. Um, and also this offers us a way of benchmarking our ratings versus the so-called journal tier outcomes. Our workflow is mapped out here. You can have a look at that on our page. You know, work comes in, evaluation, we prioritize it, evaluation managers, uh, they choose evaluators, there's communication, there's between authors and evaluators and evaluation managers. Uh, and then the ultimate output is put together as a package, authors are given a chance to respond. So again, our basic approach is quantifiable metrics to benchmark existing measures, as well as the multidimensional uh, ratings we talked about before, as well as descriptive evaluations with certain priorities. Um, and um, we make our output, these evaluations, the evaluation content, which is often you know very, very um, in-depth, we make it highly visible and we link it to bibliometrics. The idea here is that authors, editors, referees, grant funders will see this before and after the paper is accepted in a traditional journal and they know that other people will see it. So they have to take it seriously. Okay, we, we publish our the output on PubPub, but we have ways of working on getting it into Google Scholar and other things that people see. Progress. Um, we're aiming to cover 70, well, it'll, it'll then be 80 so in total over an 18 month period. We've 12 evaluated packages so far, about 22, 23 more in the evaluation process. 80 are in the 80 things we're, we're prioritizing. We'll be adding more to that. We have systems for that. Um, we're building systems, we're building tools, processes. Um, you can see our knowledge base explaining it, what we do and, and how you can engage. Um, we have a data dashboard I mentioned before of the evaluation output and other outputs. And we're building hosting, prioritization, management tools and interface, and we're building our teams. And we're cultivating links with Knowledge Futures, Center for Open Science, Effective Thesis, Free Review, Institute for Replication, Replicats, IGDOR, BITS, et cetera. We're building a team. 
Um, this is our management team. Most of these people have been with us for about a year. Um, and we're expanding this a bit. There'll be a few more people and we're welcoming, looking for more people to join and be part of this, as well as our advisory board. Um, and we have a large group of people in our network, including field specialists. By the way, we generally compensate people for their work, at least to some extent. Um, we have eight teams that help us identify, prioritize, and then they often evaluate, manage the evaluations of this work across a range of sort of priority areas, 35 field specialists, mostly academics, but also some people involved in policy and, and um, prioritization. Mm -hmm. We, you can sign up to be part of our evaluator pool where we are prioritize them in looking for people to evaluate the work, although we often go outside that pool. 125 people have signed up. Seems pretty high quality. About half have PhDs. Most others have MS and master's degrees. Over half are economists, um, which is kind of our focal area. But we still have some challenges, and we'll talk about these in the breakouts. I think the big challenges could be uh, partitioned into coordination problem, trying to even if people agree this would be a good system, people might be reluctant to take the first step and think that, well, I'll be punished for being different. We want to shift that to people, that um, belief toward people fearing missing out. People think I need, I want to be part of this group because I'll be rewarded. We also, there's also some issues. Journals do things a certain way. They have editors. They have established credibility. Can we generate that um informativeness and make that well known and um can we you know can we do as as well as journals or better so we're going to give another breakouts have another breakout session to get your feedback on the structured evaluation metrics which is part of what we use for that and here's how you i'm encouraging you to get involved um join our team help solve the collect participate help solve the collective what i'll call the collective action pro problem be an early adopter, submit your research, suggest research, join our team, join our evaluator pool, consider our evaluations and do they have value in your processes? Give us feedback on that um, and reward other people who are early adopters, not just for unjournal, but also for other things, other initiatives. And that segues to our prizes. We're going to reward some people who have engaged uh, with us. Uh, okay. 